Take your seats. Tell somebody he's all that I need. He's all that I need. He's all that I need. I honor God tonight for all that he's done, for all that he is doing. I thank him for an opportunity to know him. And not just to know him in his glory, but to know him in the power of his suffering. I praise God that he chose me to suffer. I thank him for my journey and I wouldn't take nothing for it. Oh, somebody ought to tell God thank you right there. Before I go into ministering the word tonight, I'd like to welcome all of the people of God that are watching across the country by satellite, by Daystar television, by TBN television. Oh, why don't you give them a good God bless you. Let them know something getting ready to happen in their living room. Let them know the power of God. Get ready to slay them out right there in the kitchen. Oh, there's no limitations to the power of God. And I honor the Lord tonight for all of the pulpit guests. I'm not going to start calling names because I don't want to get in trouble, but I do want to acknowledge my own pastor in his absence Dr. John H. Boyd Sr., who I know is watching right now. And his wife, woman of God. My assistant pastor with you all have just met. And I'd like to acknowledge my godparents tonight, my spiritual parents, birthed me out for nine years. Pastor and Sister Vita Nichols, would you please stand? So the people of God can see who you are. She was back in the hotel room sick and couldn't even walk and we called the devil a liar. And I sent two men over there. I said, if you gotta pick her up and carry her, God's gonna heal her body when she gets here. And there she sits now, healed by the power of God. And I'd like to give a special acknowledgement to 
Paula and Randy White, who have been such a support. I know just about everybody in here know who Paula is, but please stand anyway, Paula. Amen. We love you too, Brother Randy, but we just partial to women right now. And to one of the, well, I'll change that, to the greatest woman in this building tonight, a person who I don't find no fault in their life, a person who has been my example, the person that is responsible for me having enough sense to recognize when my spiritual deposits come, the person that taught me God, the person that raised me in Sunday school, the person that taught me how to seek the Lord, the person that was responsible for making a deposit in my life to the point that I became thirsty for the rest of my life for God. I like for this entire building to stand on their feet and recognize my mother. Bless you, mother. I have so many. Pastor Craig, my spiritual father and mother and sister Craig, y'all stand up and wave. I'm telling you, I got... God has done this thing in my life because I have many spiritual fathers and mothers. And that's what we need in this hour. To Sister Weeks, Bishop Weeks, Sr.'s wife, stand, Mother Weeks, stand. Amen. Woman of God, great woman of God. And to all of the elders and the saints, and, and I know before the week is out, I probably won't uh, forget some of you, and so I'll be calling, and, and I just don't want to miss you. If I miss you, it's not because I don't love you, but I'll get around to you. And somebody else, is, I have a very special person that, that just really surprised me. Sister Pearson, where are you? Mother Pearson, Mother Pearson, please. Carlton Pearson's mother, please stand. <laughs> Love that woman. If you will get your Bibles, and now it's time for us to... See what it is the Father wants to say. It's time for us to find out the purpose for which we are here tonight. I don't want Elder Boy to go too far. I want somebody to find him wherever he is because I'm going to need him. While you're turning your Bibles to the book of Jeremiah, Hi, Dr. Johnson, president of our women's department right there. I just, I just spotted you. Somebody, wave, Dr. Johnson. Put the camera up on her so they can see her on the monitor. The woman done prayed me through a lot of situations. Come on, put your hands together for Dr. Gail Johnson. <laughs> Tashana, are you ready? Jeremiah. The Lord told me to read this. I have to shout out to read this because not only will it speak for you, he told me that tonight I must declare my purpose, must bring clarity to why I'm here. If you're ready, just put, say testing because I want to make sure your mic is right. Testing, testing. Okay. And somebody in here may grab a hold to this. But while she is reading this, it is going to charge me because it is what God is saying to me. Start reading, please, at the first verse. Tashana, she's going to read alone. You can just follow with your eyes. Read. The words of Jeremiah, mm -hmm. son of Hilkiah, mm -hmm. of the priests who were in Adnoth. Take your time. In the land of Benjamin, mm -hmm. two or three miles north of Jerusalem, 
to whom the word of the Lord came mm -hmm. in the days of Josiah, mm -hmm. son of Ammon, king of Judah, in the 13th year of his reign. Yes. It came also in the days of Jehoiakim, son of Josiah, king of Judah, until the end of the 11th year of Zedekiah, son of Josiah, king of Judah, until the carrying away of Jerusalem yes. into captivity in the fifth month. Then the word of the Lord came to me, Jeremiah, saying, Yes. Before I formed you in the womb, yes. I knew and approved of you yes. as my chosen instrument. And before you were born, yes. I separated and set you apart, yes. consecrating you, and I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. Then said I, Ah, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am only a youth. But the Lord said to me, Say not, I am only a youth. For you shall go to all to whom I shall send you, and whatever I command you, you shall speak. Be not afraid of them, their faces, for I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. Yes. And the Lord said to me, Behold, I have put my words in your mouth. Yes. See, I have this day appointed you to the oversight of the nations and of the kingdoms to root out and pull down, to destroy and to overthrow, yes. to build and to plant. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me saying, Read it. Jeremiah, what do you see? And I said, I see a branch or shoot of an almond tree, the emblem of alertness and activity blossoming in late winter. Then said the Lord to me, You have seen well, for I am alert and active, watching over my word to perform it. And the word of the Lord came to me the second time, saying, What do you see? And I said, I see a boiling pot, and the face of it is tipped away from the north. It's a mouth about to pour forth on the south on Judea. Then the Lord said to me, out of the north, the evil which the prophets had foretold as a result of a national sin shall disclose itself and break forth upon all the inhabitants of the land. For behold, I will call all the tribes of the kingdoms of the north, says the Lord, and they will come and set every one his throne at the entrance of the gates of Jerusalem against all its walls round about and against all the cities of Judah as God's judicial act, a consequence of Judah's wickedness. And I will utter my judgments against him for all the wickedness of those who have forsaken me, burn incense to other gods, yes, God. and worship the works of their own hands or idols. Yes. But you, Jeremiah, yes, God. gird up your loins, arise and tell them all that I command you. Yes. Do not be dismayed and break down at the sight of their faces, lest I confound you before them and permit you to be overcome. Yes, God. For I behold have made you this day a fortified city yes, God. and an iron pillar yes, God. and bronze walls yes, God. against the whole land yes, God. against the successive kings of Judah yes, Lord. against its princes against its priests and against the people of the land giving you divine strength yes, God. which no hostile power can overcome. Yes, Lord. And they shall fight against you. Yes, God. But they shall not finally prevail against yes, you. Yes, God. For I am with you. Yes. Says the Lord to deliver you.
when the Lord began to give me this message to deliver it was approximately three years ago and I have attempted to hint around with it on several occasions but every time I would try to deliver it 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 came across with a tangible anointing but not the power not the power that I felt that God wanted to display in it and so I attempted for three years it gave me that we were going to do the next CD after the morning glory CD and it was going to be called behind the veil for three years we tried to produce that CD and we when I tell you that it got stuck in the machines and machines broke down and it got stuck in the computers and it wouldn't come out of the computers and my pastor had a stroke and we had to stop working on the project and and Elder Boyd and I didn't understand what was going on with why it was taking us so long to and why the warfare and I think we quit the project maybe 20 times or more until the Lord began to reveal to us this year that the church have been living under the illusion of the residue of what's been left over from the past church We've been living off of the residue of the testimonies of the Smith Wigglesworths and the Catherine Coomans and the Amy Simple McPhersons. But my Bible said that in the last days, I'm going to do a greater work. And so the church have been in a state of trying to imitate the old instead of pressing into the new and then God began to show me that the reason why it was so difficult to do the behind the veil CD is because nobody just walks behind the veil Nobody just touched God any kind of way they want to. That there is a process, not, not a process into church, because now everybody is going to church. And now it is a popular thing. And I said it the other night on TBN and I'll say it again. It's a popular thing for secular artists to sing suck me up and lick me down songs and then get on national television and thank God for their careers. And I find it strange because that same spirit is beginning to seduce the church to the point that we would rather pacify and compromise the gospel to fill our churches up. But God said in this conference, he wants me to get rid of the gray shade that it's either black or white. It is either heaven or hell. There is no purgatory place in this walk with God. Either you giving it all up and coming with God all the way or you're going to stay away dirty. But the new church that God is raising up, the new church is a church of no compromise. You may not want to believe it, 
but God's got a people. I said God's got a people. God's got a remnant that is sitting down inside of the traditional church. And God began to say, when you lift up your voice and begin to cry out, those that belong to me, they will hear my voice and they will come. Oh my God. This is not a conference. This is something that God had been waiting on for a long time. This has nothing to do with Juanita Bynum. This has nothing to do with television. It is a, a birthing out of a people that's been in surveil for the real God. It's a people that's tired of the show. It's a, oh my God, it's a cry of the people that's tired of the disco that's in the church. It is a people that's tired that, oh my God, they can't tell the difference between clean and unclean. It's a people that says, I don't want to miss the rapture. I want to be ready when he comes. And that's when the Lord began to say they're coming against you. That's when he could begin to tell me they're coming against you. He said the religious church is coming against you. The religious church is going to say that you're preaching legalism. No, I'm preaching the gospel. I'm, I don't know where you are, but I'm going back to the Bible. I'm going back to the beginning of time. Before Jesus was ushered into the earth, God commanded Moses to try to go to Exodus, the 27th chapter. He commanded Moses to build him a tabernacle. And the reason why he wanted him to build this tabernacle, saints of God, is because the tabernacle would be a shadow of what was to come. A shadow. Now, if it was going to be a shadow of what was to come, that means when the construction of the tabernacle began to go up, it had to match exactly with the substance. It could not let off a shadow of a circle when the substance is the cross. So that was the reason why I had them to move the platform out of the way. God, I thank you. Because for too long, Lord Jesus, God help me. Preaching the gospel in this last decade have turned into an art and a show. Jesus. He said, I want you to move the platform from the center and get man out of the way and put the brazen ladder where it's supposed to be. My God, my God, my God, my God, my God. Because he said man is not the center of attraction. I'm not getting nobody to say nothing right there. You are not the center of attraction. Nobody is studying anything that you're talking about. If you're not preaching in this last hour, the death, the burial, and the resurrection. God, help me deliver this thing, Jesus. 
So he said, build me a tabernacle. And I want you to put it in the wilderness. I want you to build it according to my measurements. He said, because it was going to be a pattern. And anybody in here that sews, if you are making a garment for a person that is a size 14, and you make the garment a size 10, I don't care how wonderful it is, they can't fit it. And God began to say that the reason why his glory cannot come in the church the way he desired is because the pattern does not fit. He said disco is not in this pattern. I'm not getting nobody to say nothing in here. Lord, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not getting nobody to talk back. Oh God, where is the church? Where, where is the church? Prostitution is not in the pattern. me to do but but I'm trying to get in this church but it doesn't fit Juanita it doesn't it's too small for me it's not it's not big enough and, and let me let me just let me just clarify that because somebody said well you know what I go oh I go to a church and then we got 15,000 it's not big enough for God it's not because you know what I done seen some storefront churches that God fits perfectly Oh, I can't, I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. I can't, I can't get nobody to talk back in here. Oh, baby, it's not the size of the church. It is the size of your righteousness. It is not, the, it's not how many members you got. It's how much do you stay on your knees. I've seen God do more with 10 people that are righteous than 10,000 that are full of degradation. He said, I want you, I want you to put all around the temple, I want you to put fine twine linen. That's why God had me to ask as many people as possible to wear something white. Because you know what we're talking about? God going to send revival in the world. But let me tell you something. Honey, let me tell you, the church is worse off than the world. God is about to send revival in the church. And we can't do nothing for the world until we get purified. Told you I'm not gonna get a lot of amen. So go move God. So so he said, he said, build it with fine twine linen. And he said, when you when you when you put this, when you put this linen all around the temple and you and you erect it, he said, the only time I want it to change colors is when it get to the east gate. He said, because I am the way, the truth, and the light. And he said, and the way into the court of the Lord is through the east gate. And he said, I want you to build that fine twine linen and I want you to stick that thing with wood and I want you to overlay the wood with gold. Y'all ain't saying that. And I want you to stick that wood down inside of sockets of silver, which means redemption, which represents the blood of Jesus. And what we're trying to do, we're trying to build a church without the blood we're trying to build the church without salvation oh my god we got a lot of folk jumping and shouting but a lot of us are not saved for real i'm talking about saved i'm talking about no compromise saved. i'm oh my god We got people saying, you know, I want you to pray for me, Prophet, because, because I want God to do something with my ministry. I want my ministry to go great. Well, let me let me help you with something. That's not the end thing no more, honey. A great ministry ain't it. Being saved is what's it. Ah, ah, oh, my God. Listen, if we would just get hungry and thirsty after God. Hey, hey, hey. If you would build a relationship with God. Oh, my God. If you would learn how to purify before God. He 
said, he said, but let me tell you, let me tell you what's that happened here. He said, let me tell you, let me tell you, it's not, it's not just ironic. It wasn't just a favor that Daystar decided to uplink this. It wasn't just a favor that, 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 that TBN decided to uplink this because this is something that God wants to say. He said, he said, the reason why the church is the way it is because the, 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 the walls that were built on the tabernacle had the five rods going through the tabernacle which represented the five-fold ministry. And so you know what then happened? Listen, listen, the church then pulled down the fine twine linen and now folk are coming up by the by the back side of the temple and they're grabbing a hold to the gifts and they're grabbing a hold to the callings i'm not getting nobody saying that but they did not get it through righteousness that's why they can preach and still lie that's why they can preach and still fornicate oh god i'm not gonna get nobody saying that that's why they can preach and still have lesbian affairs and still have homosexual relationships because they did not come for the escape they came they He said that the, that the, that the colors, and let me, let me clarify, let me clarify an erroneous doctrine. They said that the colors that are in the gate represented the works of Jesus Christ. So in order to get into the outer court, you had to come by way of the works of Jesus Christ. So how is it that we're telling people, oh, that God hear you? Oh, yeah, I know I'm not saved, but I, he hears sinner's prayer of repentance, of repentance. I'm not getting nobody to say that. I said, of repentance. How can you ignore the way? I'm not here. Well, you know, I prayed and I was a sinner and God heard me. No, God is sovereign. God does what he wants to do. You don't tell God what to do. If you are lying, a homong, and a cheater, and you can command God, then what is my right? Then why am I giving up everything? Oh, I'm not getting nobody to say nothing here. See, see, because, because, because now it is a cute salvation. You might want to be saved. I want to be saved. You come at all to just give you a little track and, you know, all right. It is, you, 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 and then three months pass by, four months pass by, five months pass by, six months pass by, seven months pass by. You still the same. You talk the same. You walk the same. You look the same. Uh -huh, uh -huh. You listen to the same music. You go to the same, the same discos. You got the, you got the same friends. I'm not. See, I'm not gonna. I'm gonna lose all of y'all. See, see, we gonna have some room for the rest of the folk this week because some of y'all ain't coming back. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. Because, because, because the Bible lets me know that, that, that when you get saved for real, the things you used to do, you don't do no more. Oh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know what kind of gospel your pastor is preaching, but my Bible says that when you get saved before, oh my God, the way I used to talk, I don't talk no more. The way I used to walk, I don't walk anymore. calling you 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 bypassed the brazen altar and came to a man now, Pastor Scott come right here come, come here. see see that's what that's what that's what people are doing now they you know you say you say you say you say do you want to be do you want to be saved but you want do you want God after you preach some weak gospel? <laughs> See, you know, we got to be careful that we don't get so strong in the love gospel that we forget the sin gospel. And so, and so here you are. Here's the brazen altar. You, 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 you come and bypass that. Oh, I don't, I don't have to fool it. I come and shake the pastor's hand. 
Now I'm saved and I love the Lord. And so now I'm living my life according to the pastor's approval. And now I'm living my life and I, and I live like all the rest of the members. And so if everybody else disco, I disco. Because that's the kind of church we go to. If everybody else pierce their ears and their nose, then I do it. Because that's the kind of, but oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. What about the brazen altar? instruments that you see on this pulpit were made by a man who became consumed with it for 10 years David Hamilton they are the exact measurements of the instruments that were used in the Bible none of these are off measurement here thank you Jesus thank you God just trying to go to Exodus the 27th chapter and the and the first verse and begin to read right quick for me 27 and 1 what does he say and make we're reading from the Amplified Bible what does he say and make the altar of acacia uh -huh. wood we five cubic square yes. and three cubits high yes within reach of all yes make horns within 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 reach of all within reach of all read it read it read it make horns for it uh -huh. on its four corners yes they shall be of one piece with it yes and you shall overlay it with bronze yes you shall make pots to take away its ashes yes and shovels basins forks and fire pans yes make all its utensils of bronze yes also make for it a grate a network of bronze no 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 watch this watch this watch this he said he said to make for it the brazen altar and make it out of bronze, make it out of brass, which represents judgment, which represents the fact that when you decide that you really want to be saved, God has got to judge your sin. I'm not getting nobody to say nothing right there. And then so, and see, this is the reason why we're having such a problem, Reverend Hill. Because see, in the Bible days, when they did the brazen altar, Renee, they did, oh, everybody want to get to the glory. Because the glory is where, oh, it shines, it's beautiful. Oh, I worship God. Oh, I praise God. But the Bible lets me know that 24 hours a day, there was bloodshed on that brazen altar. I'm not hearing nobody say nothing. 24 hours a day they were bringing the sacrifices to the brazen altar. 24 hours a day they were taking the sacrifices and they were slaying them. Oh, as a redemption for their sins. And nobody likes that part. Because you know what the altar means? The definition for altar in the Hebrew means a great slaughtering. And that's what's wrong with the church. We're not ready for God to slay us and slaughter us. We're not ready to die to our will and our ways. He said, he said, he said make upon it for horns. Where's the board? Get out the board. He said, what I want you to do is, I want you to take the sacrifices and I want you to bring them into the outer court because guess what this is something that is powerful if you don't go by way of the brazen altar if you ignore the brazen altar then it annihilates everything else that is up here nothing up here works I'm not hearing nobody say nothing you might as well stop speaking in tongues because they have no power I wish I had somebody to say something right there you might as well stop dancing right now the organist can go home because nothing up here oh I'm not getting nobody to say nothing See, up here where you read your Bible and you think you're so smart in the gospel, you ain't got nothing if you bypass this. Oh, I'm not getting nobody to say nothing. Oh, you mean because you come here and speak in tongues at the altar of incense that you're doing something? Baby, you can go and sit down. Or do you think because you got an anointing on your life 
off that you all that. You can go and sit down if you bypass the brazen altar and the brazen lover. You are on your way to hell speaking in tongues and shouting. Go to Habakkuk 3, Habakkuk 3 and 4, Habakkuk 3 and 4. Well, I want, I want the power of God in my life. So that's what they say. That's what these people say. That's what people say all over the country. I want the power of God in my life. I want the power of God. Oh, honey, I got the power. Oh, yeah, I got the power. Because you know, when I pray, when I pray for people, they fell out. That's, honey, that ain't nothing. Folk fall out anyway just because they falling out. I done seen more folk get more standing up than they did it when they hit the ground. Y'all, he said nothing. So they said, so they said, so they said, what does he say? What does he say in Habakkuk, Habakkuk 3 and 4? What does he say, Tashana? And his brightness was like the sunlight. Yes. Rays streamed from his hand. Ah, what? And what? Then, wait, wait. What streamed from his hand? Rays streamed from his hand. Yes. And there in the sunlight splendor. Yes. Was a hiding place of his power. Okay, he said there in the sunlight splendor was the hiding place of his power. Jesus, have mercy. I said, okay, God. I mean, these are the same hands that was nailed to the cross. Is these the same hands that was pierced? Okay, then what's it in the, then, 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 okay, what are you talking about? He said, I'm talking about the fact that, that Jesus Christ, when the great slaughtering was going on, Tashana, I want you to turn to Psalms 118 and 27, when the great slaughtering was going on, saints, you gotta hear this, the, 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 the sacrifices, they were, Jesus have mercy. They were, the Bible said that when they got into the court of the Lord, the first thing that was there was this brazen altar. Come here, elder boy, please. I need you to help me with this. And what did he say in Psalms 118? What did he say? Just trying to read it. The Lord is God. Yes. Who has shown and given us light. Yes. He has illuminated us with great yes. freedom and joy. Yes. Decorate the festival. Decor with decorate the festival. Go ahead. Decorate the festival. Yes. With leafy bowls. Yes. And bind the sacrifice. Wait, wait, wait. And bind the sacrifices. What? And bind the sacrifices. Yes. To be offered uh -huh. with thick cords. Yes. All over the priest court. Yes. Right up to the horns of the altar. No, no, no. Wait, 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 wait. So then what happens is when, God help me, when they got ready, take this apart from me, to use the sacrifice. Jesus. Jesus. The Bible said, take the sacrifice. He said, take the sacrifice and tie it up. Take your flesh and tie it up. Because when they got ready to slay the sacrifice, they brought them to the brazen altar already dead. In the Old Testament, they would take them in the outer court and they would slit their throats from ear to ear. And then they would take them and they would sit them over on top of the brazen altar. But then the Bible said in Romans, the, oh Jesus, 12 and 1, the reason why God spoke in Psalms 118 and said to tie the sacrifice to the altar, because Romans 12 said, present your body a living sacrifice. And God knew that there was coming a time that your flesh was going to wrestle against God. And your flesh was not going to want to die. And your flesh was going to wrestle with the will of God. So God said, I'm going to help.
up you. I'm going to tie you to the brazen altar. Give me cord as I walk out the board. Let it go around. Let it go around. Give me cord. Hurry up. Give me cord. Give me cord. Because he knew that some of y'all was going to want to leave the church. And some of y'all was going to want to leave your prayer life and some of y'all wasn't going to want to stay with that up. fix the court some of y'all wasn't going to want to stay where God put you some of y'all was going to let a boyfriend cause you to leave God some of y'all was going to oh my God was going to let a girlfriend tell you baby why are you going to that conference you think you're so deep I don't know why you're doing all that praying he knew it he knew somebody was going to convince you to give up your prayer life and stop fasting and stop praying. He knew that somebody was going to persecute you and your flesh was going to get tired. So he said, tie your body to the altar. He said, because it's coming. He said, it's coming. He said, it's coming. He said, because after a while, lift the cord up. He said, after a while, after a while, he said, your turn is coming. Your turn is coming. That God is going to have you tied. Come on, little boy. Come around here. He said, it's coming. Pick me up. That the Holy Ghost was going to cause you. And that turn is tonight. Your season is here. That's why you came. You didn't come for your ministry to be anointed. You didn't come for God to do something for your gift. You came in and out because you are sacrifice. It's time for God to put you. Come on, put you over inside. Under the bucket. Somebody said, somebody said, well, you know what, God, 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 God sent Jesus, and he was the ultimate sacrifice. But yeah, Paul said it, but I die daily. Yes, Jesus is the ultimate sacrifice. He's the ultimate sacrifice. But there's something about you, because your will keeps getting in God's way. What you think keeps getting in God's way. Yes, God has a ministry for you, but God can't raise you.
raise you up because he's not raising up flesh he's killing flesh he's burning flesh up flesh can't go up flesh can't preach to his people because in the last days I'm giving my people my ear and a stranger they will not follow they will not follow the flesh so 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 get on top yes so so let me tell you now let me tell you something where we are now where we are now he said out of court that about you and Nadab would and got them some fire y'all ain't saying nothing some of y'all don't want to got you some tongues some of y'all don't want to got you a gift oh you don't want to talk back to me in here some of y'all wouldn't got you a little Holy Ghost. But I guarantee you what you got, you can't stay saved one week. Because it ain't the real thing. I'm not hearing nobody say nothing. Some of y'all done wouldn't got y'all something. Some of y'all done wouldn't got y'all something that God ain't gave you. Because you didn't get it on the altar. It ain't pure. That's why you preach mad. That's why you can't take nothing. That's why you can't take rebuke. That's why you can't take correction. Because you've never been in the fire. But anybody that's ever been in the fire, honey, they can stand to be corrected. They can take the heat. I'm not giving nobody say nothing. Anybody in here that's ever been to the brazen altar, they know what it means. Oh, God. They know what it means. Something is about to hit this place. Something is about to hit this place. Something is about to hit this place. Good God have mercy. And God told me tonight, you can't go any further. We can't do nothing else in this conference until everybody in this building that's got fine twine linen on, everybody that's got on white, drop your title, drop what you think, and put yourself this very night back on the brazen altar and say, God, don't let me out until I'm purified. God, don't let me out until I'm saved for real. God! In about five minutes, in about five minutes, Some of y'all in here right now saying, I don't want to mess up, I don't want to mess up my white. But God said, down, baby. He said, down, sweetheart. He said, down. He said, down. And he said, go down howling. Some of y'all need to get to this altar. This ain't up here for decoration. This ain't up here for show. He said, because I'm going to flip your life inside out in this conference. You better come say, God. Surrender my all. Oh, there's something in this building tonight that God wants to do in your life. You gotta come to the brazen altar. You gotta come back and get rid of bitterness. You gotta get rid of hatred and unforgiveness. You gotta get rid of lying and fornicating. God, burn it up. You right there in your seat. You right there in those bleachers. You better start crying out to God. Because when I tell you that a divine presence is going to step in this sanctuary before this conference is over, God's going to show us himself uncut. But he said, I want purification. I want everybody in here to begin to open up your mouth and begin to cry out to God. Don't you dare sit there rocking. Ain't nobody stunned how you look. We don't care about your hairstyle. Get down on your knees right where you are and begin to cry out to God. Come on, open up your mouth. Kira na na ba kosa na ba ha da da bosita ba ha. Kira na na ba na na ma sa na ma ha 
hallelujah. I mean cry out until you get a breakthrough. Give up to him, give it all to him. Tell God the truth tonight. You've been going to conferences lying to God. You've been going to conferences dancing and shouting. But God said, tell me the truth tonight. Tell me who you are. Tell me I'm a liar. Tell me I'm a thief, God. Tell me I got a lesbian problem. Oh, God, help me tonight. Tell me I got a hypocrite problem. He said, I want to know who you are tonight. I want to know what I'm burning up tonight. Open up your mouth. I can't hear you. Hold on, I'm doing it. I feel 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 it. Begin to shout, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Come out of the made up tongues. Get rid of the fake tongues. Stop trying to speak in tongues and just tell God yes. <laughs> Come on, something is about to break in two minutes. Something is about to break in two minutes. Come on, I feel it. Something is about to break in here. Something is about to break in here. Something is about to break. Something is about to break. Something is about to break. The rolling. Something is about to break. Something is about to break. You. Something is about to break in here. Hold on, I'm on course. See the other one course. Son of the Baha. Son of the Baha. Seek it out of a hundred of the Baha. Son of the Baha. Son of the Baha. Open up your mouth. Open up your mouth. Open up your mouth. Open up your mouth. Sona na na ba kasi na ba ha, sona na na ba kasi na ba shama na ba saya, 
Sara, hold on, Sara. 
I'm purifying your mind right now. I'm purifying your spirit right now. When you leave out of here tonight, every demon spirit is being dropped on the floor. I'm gonna put my foot on Satan tonight. For the next three minutes, I just want you to praise me like it's your last chance. And I'm gonna free you. I want you to praise me. Get up on your feet. Get up on your feet. Praise me, and I'm gonna free your mind. Hold on, I'm outside. Hold on, I'm outside. Hold on, I'm
Put your hands on your neighbor next to you. Some of y'all gonna think I'm crazy, but just follow me. He said, put your hands on your neighbor next to you. And for 60 seconds, just start shouting. Just start hollering.
Grab a neighbor by the hand right quick. As we get ready. As we get ready to leave out of this building. God told me to tell you. You didn't come for a vacation. You didn't come to get no rest. You came to go to your next level. You ain't got time to stay in the bed and sleep. I only got a few more days to get you there. Get you there. Your destiny is tied up in this meeting. Your family is tied up in this meeting. There, oh my God, there's going to be healings in this meeting. 